Hi there, today I'm going to show you how to turn your scenes in Unity into high quality videos that you can use for your trailers, among other things. First things first, make sure you have Cinemachine installed, as well as the Unity recorder here. Okay, let's open the Timeline tab. We can do this by going to Windows Sequencing Timeline. As with any window in Unity, you can drag it to wherever you want. I'm gonna dock it down here. Then what we'll wanna do is we'll take our scene here with all its objects and create a parent object for it. Okay, then we're gonna wanna select our parent object here and in the timeline window, click create. We'll need to save this timeline somewhere, similarly to the animator if you've ever used that before. And now we can see a timeline down here. Now this timeline will go away if we click away from an object. So let's lock it down here. That way if we click on another object, it'll still stay there. Then what we're gonna wanna do is right click here and create a Cinemachine track. Then here we just simply right click again and create a Cinemachine shot. Now we can select a virtual camera that already exists or we can just hit create to create a new one. And then it auto fills here. That's this one over here. This will also have added the Cinemachine brain component to our main camera. So you can also drag that over into here. So this virtual camera here is positioned right here in the scene. And what we're gonna wanna do is create a sweeping motion for it. We can choose a starting position. For example, if we want it to start up here, uh, we can just have it look down on here. Just select the virtual camera and go to game object align with view. And then the camera will be looking from this position. Now we'll want to animate it so that it goes somewhere else. Uh, we can, for example, move a bit and I don't know, look down here. And then what we're gonna wanna do is go back to our timeline add another Cinemachine shot and create another virtual camera. The camera we can reposition or we can just uh, keep it as it is right here. But the important thing is we can now drag our shot here in the timeline down above the other and it will transition between the two positions of these cameras as long as they're over each other. We can try this by hitting play and you can see that the camera kind of zooms in. Okay, great. We can of course adjust this a bit more. I'd like to bring it a bit more left and maybe reduce the time a bit. And just in general, play around with it. And if we hit play, this is what it looks like now. Okay, now that we have the camera motion, let's record it. To do this, go to the timeline and right click. And we're going to create a recorder track here. Again, you're gonna want to hit right click here and create add recorder clip. Now the way it'll work is as long as there's this recorder clip, it will record what's being actively shown on your game view. So if you want to record a bit more than this, or if you want to record less, uh, you just change the size of this. So just make sure it stretches across your whole timeline. You can set all the settings over here, whether you want it to be a movie, a GIF, or even just only audio. You can also change exactly where it's getting all its information from. Most importantly, here you can set the quality you want. Let's start with a simple 1080p version with a 16 by nine aspect ratio. We currently don't have audio, so we don't even need to bother with it. So we can uncheck this box. You can also put in exactly how you want to export it, but this will be fine for us. This will be the file name. You can also add some specific stuff, like right now it's including the take number. This is fine for us. We'll call it something like test movie. And then if you want to choose where it saves, you just click the dots here and choose where you want it to save. Okay, now all you have to do is hit the play button and it'll start recording. Okay, you can see that the view here is switched to 16 by nine. That's why it's a bit horizontal instead of the free aspect it was before. Also, you'll notice here at the bottom, it's moving rather slowly. Of course, it's taking the full time to render. There aren't gonna be any lag spikes in the end recording. But to compensate for that, it's gonna have to take some time to render everything now. It's rendering everything at the full frames and resolution, so it's gonna take a bit longer than it normally does. Here's a real timer for reference, so you can compare how slow it's going. This is, of course, also a big scene, so it's gonna take longer. You can actually check out this scene with the asset in the link in the description. Okay, and now it's done. You can see it just returns to real time. So we can just hit the stop and let's look at what came out of it. Okay, here we have our file now. As you can see, it's five seconds as we specified over here. It's at the full 1080p resolution and it's very smooth. Okay, that works great. I'd like to add a bit more shots to our little video here. So let's do that now. I'm just going to create another Cinemachine shot with its own virtual camera. And this one will be positioned down here in the streets. So again, you just click on your camera and 
click align with view. And then the camera goes to our position. I'm gonna do a hard cut this time. So instead of intersecting it with the previous take like this, I'm just going to leave it on its own. Let's save that and try it out. Now this time I'll set the resolution a bit lower. Uh, let's do something like 720 and we can put it on, let's say a four by three aspect ratio. And let's try this one out. Again, all you have to do is hit play. And after a bit of loading, it'll go through the motions. The great thing about something like this is you never have to worry about any lag spikes or anything because it's rendering at its own pace, making sure that it gets every frame it needs to, which makes it ideal for stuff like trailers. So you can see down here, it's coming right now to where it's stopping with a virtual camera. And after that, it's gonna go to the hard cut to the next camera down in the streets. And that cut's gonna happen right about now. There you go, now you see it just standing there. Okay, and now it's done and we can hit the stop button. By the way, here you can change your view here from frames to seconds, uh, as well as change your frame rate here while you're at it. Anyway, we can also see now that we're done with our second take, we're on take number three. And if we open test movie take two, we can see first of all that it's in the four by three aspect resolution and the quality is a bit worse at 720p. We have this hard cut here as well. But yeah, it looks nice and smooth, looks very nice. What else can we do? One important thing to realize is that we don't have to specifically change everything here in the timeline. We can make an object, say a sphere here, we can make it bigger. And if we hit play, we can move the sphere around in real time and it'll record this in our video. Now it is worth noting that uh, your movements, like if I spam around really quickly, uh, these movements will be captured at a much higher speed because we're recording at a much lower speed. Uh, but if you compensate for that, everything will still be able to change in real time, which is nice. Okay, it's done, let's look at that. Okay, if we hit play, now you'll notice that the sphere is moving around. Isn't that cool? Now the thing is we don't even need to use the Cinemachine Brain Hero. If we mute it by clicking this button, we can enable something like a first person camera. And now I am controlling a first person character. I can jump around and look everywhere. Now it's obviously much slower, so ideally you would have the cinematic angles, but it is certainly an option for those who are into it. You can also compromise by recording at simply a lower quality and see how that works for you. Again, here's the real time that has passed so far. Okay, let's see what that turned out. Okay, as you can see, our scene starts in the wrong camera, but it quickly switches over to the first person one. And you can see us roaming around here. Now the camera you saw at the beginning was one that actually has a whole sweep of this whole asset. So let's use that one next. Here, if we hit play, you can see we've got this beautiful view through a house. Okay, well, as you can see, this is a very powerful technique. I hope you get to use it one day. Thanks for watching. If you want to make sure your itch.io pages look way more interesting, you'd be missing out if you don't watch this video. Animated backgrounds? Customizable fonts? Games that get bigger when you hover over them?